Hey, how's it going everyone? This is the Anime Man. I was one of the very few fortunate otakus who actually had access to a bunch of manga and anime stuff from a younger age. I would take family trips to Japan to indulge myself in the language, the culture, the food, and of course, the otaku world. Another thing that I absolutely love from a young age, and even still now, is games. More specifically, Nintendo games. Legend of Zelda, Metroid, Kirby... My jam! But like every kid who grew up with Nintendo games, you just couldn't go past the simple beauty and elegance that was the Super Mario franchise. I had such a strong love for anime and manga and the Super Mario games that I can safely say that I think 99% of my childhood memories that I still remember revolve around either one of the two. Yeah, I know. High octane shit, right? And I don't exactly remember how, but it seems like five-year-old Joey managed to stumble upon this thing that just happened to be a combination of the two things that I absolutely loved and the two things that absolutely shaped my childhood. A Super Mario manga. Now, I don't know how many people know this, but yes, there is a legitimate Super Mario manga that has actually been serializing for a whopping 26 years, simply titled Super Mario Kun. And I love it. Now yes, it is a manga aimed towards little kids, serialized in Gekkan Korokoro Komiksu since the early 90s. But growing up as a little kid, this was my shit. And I'm just gonna say this right now, but I honestly think I'm gonna have kind of a difficult time to try and explain to you in this video as to why exactly this Super Mario Bros. manga is in fact awesome. There's a lot of good reasons as to why you've probably never heard of this manga, or if you have heard of it, there's probably a good chance you've never read it or experienced it. Mostly for the reason that this manga never actually made it out of Japan until very recently in 2014, where the first couple of volumes was translated into French and Spanish. But as of the recording of this video, there is no legal source to obtain the English translation of this series. But more so than anything, I think this is one of the few types of manga whose content can't really appeal to anyone outside of Japan and couldn't really appeal to anyone outside of Japan. Let's examine. Now you might be like, Joey, that's absurd. Like the Super Mario franchise is extremely popular outside of Japan. Look, it sold a bajillion games. I mean, look at the overwhelming success of Super Mario Odyssey. Of course Mario is an international concept. Never heard of fucking new Donk City in Japan before. But Super Mario Kun, the manga series, is absolutely not for an international audience, and most likely because it just happens to fall under the classic gyaku manga genre. Now, this isn't the same as your everyday comedy manga series that you stumble upon in the West, like Beelzebub, Prison School, or even the wacky and surreal Nichijou series. Classic gyaku manga like Super Mario Kun focuses more on slapstick violence and crude humor. Simple concepts that are just straight to the point as they're trying to convey such jokes to a younger demographic. That means a ton of poop jokes, very simple word plays that are just straight to the point, and lots of cases of Mario and the gang getting hurt in ridiculous ways for the lols. When we say crude humor, most people point to fucked up humor with very adult themes, like those seen in prison school. But in actuality, crude humor can be some of the simplest forms of comedy, at least in manga. What I've always found fascinating about comedy manga in the likes of Nichijo, Azamanga Dayo, or the more recent Pop to Pipiku is its surprisingly mature ways to convey its comedy. For example, in the Nichijo manga and anime, there are many jokes that may not seem as apparently funny on first inspection, but then as the joke progresses, usually in the direction you weren't expecting the joke to go, you start to see the full joke. It's not apparent at first where the joke even is, or even if what you're watching or reading right now is even part of a joke at all. In a lot of Gyaku manga, like in Super Mario Kun, there is a clear setup, a clear misdirection, and a clear end to a single joke before advancing to the next one, usually with some kind of expository segment that fleshes out the underlying plot of the particular arc it is following. The simple art style of the characters combined with this idea of zukoke, which means to fall over in Japanese, combined with a bunch of simple fourth wall breaks and a lot of other kinds of jokes that are very easy to understand is what makes Super Mario Kun so easy to digest. This whole idea of zukoke is very Japanese and has existed in comedy manga for decades, dating all the way back to some of the oldest comedy manga series done by the likes of Akatsuka Fujio, who's said to be dubbed the father of comedy anime. I mean, look, if you have a comedy manga award named 
after you, then I think it's safe to say that you were probably one funny motherfucker. Now you might be wondering, well, why are they falling over at the end of a joke. Well, Zukoke is a very clear visual cue to suggest that the characters who aren't exactly involved in said joke are responding to the joke in the same way that you are as the reader. Think of it like this. If I handed you a piece of cake and said, here's a cake for you, and as you went to grab it, I then say, psych, the cake was a lie, you would probably react like this. You stumbled a little bit because you were misdirected into thinking that you were going to get the cake, but you didn't. What you just did is basically the foundation of Zukoke. Instead of cake though, in Super Mario Kun, the characters are stumbling because of a misdirection of a joke. Thinking a situation is going to go one way, but because the central character in the situation does something or makes a fool of themselves to make the situation go the other way, it creates a little misdirection, aka a nice little joke. In Super Mario Kun, this reaction to the misdirection is heavily exaggerated for comedic effect, but it also adds another layer of comedy to the joke. Just by watching all these other characters overreact in this way, to a kid reading this manga is funny in itself. It's basically just another very easily digestible form of visual comedy which kids eat up like candy. What's amazing though is that although their visual representations might be a little bit more subtle, these types of zukoke can actually be seen in other non-child friendly manga series as well. They even exist in some of Shonen Jump's older and more well-known series in the likes of Yu Yu Hakusho and Slam Dunk among many others. But as I explained this zukoke phenomenon that's happening in these manga series, there might be a lot of you watching this and not quite understanding why something like that might be funny. Like why does showing characters stumble at the end of a misdirected situation make that scene funny? Well that kind of way of thinking might be exactly the reason as to why you've never heard of Super Mario Kun or never read Super Mario Kun in the first place. Because in Super Mario Kun, this Zukoke element is so heavily implemented into its central comedic focus, it might also be really, really difficult to translate that accurately to a Western audience. And that's regardless of whether the Super Mario franchise as a whole was so universally accepted as a concept even before the serialization of this manga. I'm honestly surprised it even managed to get a translation at all in French and Spanish, but not exactly English. I thought for French and Spanish it would kind of be the same thing as if it were translated to English, but I guess not. I don't know, either that or there was just a massive demand for the Super Mario Kart manga to get translated into French and Spanish. Who knows? But honestly, even though this manga is aimed at smaller children, I still go back to it as an adult and kind of just flip through the pages just to see the simple mishaps and comedy. Yes, it is very, very childish humor. And if you're reading it for the first time as an adult, you might not exactly find it funny at all. But I mean, as they say, if you eat steak every day, Sometimes you just want to eat a hamburger. As much as I love the clever multi layered wordplay of works from Nishio Ishin, sometimes I just want to turn my brain off and just watch Mario and Yoshi tell poop jokes to each other. And who doesn't love a good poop joke? By the way, if you're wondering, yes, this series is still serializing in Gekka Korokoro comics to this day, boasting an impressive 52 volumes in its library. Which is more impressive thinking that one chapter gets released every month instead of the weekly chapter releases that more people in the West are used to. I think I personally stopped reading it at the end of volume 27-ish, which is around the end of the Paper Mario arc, so just goes to show how long it's been since I've read that. God, I'm old! Honestly, I'd love to actually pick it up again just to see how the manga might have changed or evolved since I last read it back in 2003. I think me reading it as a 23-year-old adult now will be greatly different as to how I read it as a 10-year-old child. I also just realized that I inadvertently just explained in this video as to why Super Mario Kun is funny by explaining how the overarching comedy of the series works, which is basically me telling you why a joke is funny 
which therefore doesn't make that joke funny anymore. So really screwed the pooch on this one. But guys, let me know what you think about all of this. If they do end up releasing this Super Mario Kun manga legally in English, would you like to give it a read? And what do you think about the comedic mechanics and tropes that exist in these types of classic Gyagu manga series? Also guys, let me know all that kind of stuff in the comments below. And as much as I'd love to point you to the direction as to where you can get this manga, as I mentioned in the beginning of this video, there is as of now, no currently legal way to read Super Mario Kun in English. So, the only thing I can suggest is you either go to sites like Amazon and eBay and get it in Japanese and try and read it in Japanese, or you come to Japan and buy the volumes of a manga for 108 yen each. Thanks, book off. Also, if there are any other topics you'd like me to discuss in future videos, then the best place to do it is over on my Twitter. So follow me there and uh, send me your suggestions and enjoy my shit posting in the meantime. Also, as always, a very special thank you to my lovely, lovely patrons who support me every single month. You guys have been fucking awesome over there. I've been releasing some awesome, cool secret videos like bloopers and stuff. And I'm working on other future like little video series that are Patreon exclusive. So if you'd like to check those out, then make sure to click that first link in the description below to support your boy. Anyways guys, thanks for watching. As always, like and favorite if you enjoy, subscribe for more anime banner, and I'll see you guys next video of whatever I make. Keep watching anime. Done it!